Hi, right, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over Section 8.7, which goes over the cost of home ownership. Mainly what we'll be doing is looking at computing the monthly payment and interest costs for our mortgage. We'll look at preparing a partial loan amortization schedule, and um, we'll look at some of these uh, parts of uh, solving problems versus what you can afford versus what you can spend, and uh, pros and cons of renting versus buying. So a mortgage. A mortgage is a long-term loan for the purpose of buying a home. The down payment on a home is the portion of the sale price of the home that the buyer initially pays to the seller. The amount of the mortgage is the difference between the sale price and the down payment. So basically, you know, you, you want to buy a home uh, for a particular amount, let's say $200,000. You have to make a down payment of $20,000 and the mortgage, the loan, would be $180,000. So there's an example there. Um, some companies called mortgage brokers offer to find you a mortgage lender willing to make you a loan. Um, most, most mortgages are fixed rate mortgages that have the same monthly payment during the entire time of the loan. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you can do variable rate mortgages known as adjustable rate mortgages. Um, they can, the, the, the payment amount changes from time to time depending on changes in the interest rate and the market value. Um, currently, interest rates are really low. It's uh, 2016, and interest rates are really low for mortgages, so I would probably go for a fixed rate mortgage now because interest rates can generally they'll probably go up in the future. Um, if interest rates are really high and you think that they're going to go down, then you might want to go for a variable rate mortgage or an adjustable rate mortgage. Um, but most mortgages now, fixed rate, 30-year or 15-year mortgages. So, most lending institutions require the buyer to pay one or more points at the beginning of closing. That's not actually true. It's an option for the, the buyer to buy points, but it's not always the case. A point is a one-time charge that equals 1% of the loan amount. For example, two points means the buyer must pay 2% of the loan at closing. This is really just a fee. This is a fee that you pay that can adjust your um, interest rate and help your interest rate lower it. But it's just a fee that you would pay the loan, the lending institution uh, at closing. And closing means when you get the loan. A document called the Truth in Lending Disclosure Statement shows the buyer the APR for the mortgage. In addition, lending institutions can require that part of the monthly payment to be deposited into escrow account, an account used by the lender to pay real estate taxes and insurance. So actually, with my current mortgage, I can compute my monthly payment using the formulas that we'll use in this section. But I also have to pay on top of that some money that goes into an escrow account that helps pay my insurance and real estate taxes. So the loan payment formula is the same that we looked at in 8.6 for cars. Uh, it's the same formula that I have here, formula number 10. We use this already. So there's the formula. And let's go through an example of a figuring out a monthly payment and and. A, uh, a down payment, etc. So let's say the price of a home is $195,000. The bank requires a 10% down payment and two points at the time of closing. So that means in order to get this loan and to move into your house, you got to pay 10% 10, 10 of the selling price plus two points of whatever you're going to borrow. So the cost of the home is financed with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 7.5%. This is a really astronomically high interest rate compared to what you see now. Generally, interest rates are around 4%. So this is just letting you know that this interest rate is way higher than what you would see nowadays. So find the required down payment, the amount of the mortgage, et cetera, and all these, all these costs. So the down payment is just going to be 10% of the $195,000. So this is like what we did in section 8.1. We figured out a percent of a number. So 10% of $195,000 is 19500 So that's the down payment. Uh, the, so then the mortgage amount, which is the loan amount, would be the 195000 minus the 19500 So in order to buy this home, you need to pay 19500 up front, and then you'll borrow from the bank $175,500. Then the cost of the two points is based off 2% of what you're borrowing. So 2% of 175500 is 3510 So that's how much you'll have to pay to the bank. The down payment goes to the seller, the person selling the home, and the cost of the two points goes to the lending institution. 
Part D, it says, now we're going to find the monthly payment. Let me make sure that's right. Find the monthly payment, excluding taxes and insurance for escrow, escrow account. So this is using the formula. This is very much like what we did in section uh, 8.6. So I'm going to follow this formula with the calculator here. I'll show you you can do this in one line. So we got, we're borrowing $175,500. Remember, that was after the down payment. So whenever you do your mortgage payment formula, you use the mortgage amount, not the selling amount, because the selling amount is the initial selling price, but you're going to make a down payment all the time when you make a, uh, a mortgage payment, or when you get a mortgage, you're going to make a down payment. So you always have to subtract that off. So $175,500 is what we're borrowing times 0 0.075, the interest rate. We're always going to be making monthly payments on mortgages. So it's monthly divided by, there should be a, a bracket and parenthesis down here. They're doing a, sh a poor job of showing that, there, but there should be a parenthesis, one minus, parenthesis one plus, 0 0.075 divided by 12. To the, remember the exponents need a parenthesis to the negative 12 times 30, parenthesis for the exponent, parenthesis for the denominator, and we see that the monthly payment is going to be about $1,227.12. They say that, or they, that it will be exactly $1,227.12. They're rounding it to the nearest dollar. I really don't know why this book does that, but that's what they do. So... The next part is figuring out the total cost of interest. This is very much like what we did in um, 8C, or sorry, 8.6. So the total cost of interest of 30 years is equal to the difference between what you pay over the over the loan and what the amount of the loan is. So there's a lot of words there. I don't know why they say so much, but remember, you're going to make, according to them, they're rounding to the nearest dollar. So you're going to make $1,227 payments every month for 30 years. It was a 30-year fixed mortgage. So over those 30 years, you're going to pay $441,000 and $441,720. Now remember, you're only borrowing $175,500. So this is a ton of interest that you're going to pay. If we subtract what you borrowed, $175,500, that will give us the interest, which I hope they'll show here on the next slide. Two hundred sixty-six thousand two hundred twenty dollars. So the four hundred forty-one thousand is what we and seven hundred twenty is what we paid over the thirty years. We borrowed one hundred seventy-five thousand, and so the interest that we paid on this loan is two hundred sixty-six thousand two hundred twenty dollars. It's a lot of interest, but that's pretty typical with a mortgage because a mortgage uh, is over a very long period of time because houses are expensive, and so that's kind of the way it goes. So when, when a loan is paid off, so basically we'll be asking you these questions, you know, how to figure out a down payment, figure out the mortgage amount, which is always the uh, selling price minus the down payment, and then some points sometimes, and then the monthly payment, and then the total interest. When a loan is paid off through a series of regular am uh, payments, is said to be amortized, amor amortized, which is literally means killed off. Although each payment is the same, with each successive payment, the interest proportion decreases and the principal portion increases. So sometimes you can look up a loan amortization schedule, um, but we'll show you how it's broken down. So we're just going to do like, here. let's say that the amount of the mortgage is 130000 the interest rate is 9.5%, which is way high than it normally would be. This would be a 15-year loan, and the monthly payment is $137.57. So to figure out how much you pay, so so for the first month and every month, you're going to pay uh, $1,357.50. How much of that will actually go towards interest? Well, I'll show you right here. To figure out the interest on any payment, it's your current balance, which on the first payment is whatever the mortgage is, times your interest rate divided by 12. So we owe $130,000 to start off this, this mortgage. And to figure out the interest, 
amount in your first payment is the 9.5%, so 095 divided by 12 times what we owe. So on that first payment, you're going to pay $1,029.17 of interest. That's the vast majority of your monthly payment is going towards interest, which is just money in the bank's uh, pocket. The rest of it will go towards your principal, which is what you owe. So thirteen fifty-seven fifty minus the ten twenty-nine seventeen three hundred twenty-eight thirty-three was would be what you paid off of this loan. So the balance would then be the hundred and thirty thousand minus the three hundred twenty-eight thirty-three that you paid off. So then the next interest would be this balance. So to get the interest part of your next payment would be this current balance times 0 0.095, the interest rate, divided by 12. So then the next interest is 1026.57. And it's a little bit lower than what we paid on the first. So the next slide will actually show you, I think, the next bit. So this is the calculations that I just did. Feel free to pause that and go back and watch, see how I did all this stuff. And they do this for the second month, second payment. So I got to finding that's 1026.57. Remember, this is the monthly payment. You subtract that off. That's how much you pay off. And then this is the balance after two payments. So you can see that if you look, that so now they're filling it in for, say, one payment, two payments, three payments, four payments, and then skipping ahead to a certain number of payments. And notice how the interest payment will go down because you're owing less and less. But the, see, the interest rate is always the same, but you're owing less and less, so the interest is less, and the amount that goes towards your principal is going up because it has to balance to get uh, your fixed monthly payment. So notice that when you get to... Um, about a, a you know payment of 125 payments in, your interest is a portion of that payment is way less than your principal amount. And eventually at the end, the 180th payment, you owe zero dollars. So we might have you do like a, a few rows of this, but not the entire 180 payments. And a lot of times you can find this schedule online pretty easily if you just type in loan amortization schedule into Google. So here's the bottom line. Uh, that they what you as far as what you can afford generally the recommendations are to spend no more than 28% of your gross monthly income for your mortgage amount uh, and then spend no more than 30% of your gross monthly income on total monthly debt including mortgage payments car payments student bills etc so if your gross annual income this is before taxes gross annual income before taxes then this is what you can afford So if your gross annual income is $25,000, what's the amount that you should spend on a mortgage? Well, we would just do 28%. Oh, well, they're doing monthly here. Sorry. So you have to convert it to monthly first. So take your $25,000, divide it by 12 to get your monthly. Then 28% of that monthly, you can afford a mortgage payment of five eighty three. dollars That's not much, but $25,000 gross annual income isn't much either. Uh, part B, it says, what's the maximum amount you spend on credit obligations? Same stuff. Take the $25,000. Divide it by 12 to get monthly, then 36% of that monthly is 750. So this goes into some details that I don't really cover. And then the last part is benefits of renting versus buying. Renting, there's there are benefits. You have no down payment. You don't have to have a bunch of money saved up. You can always easily re relocate, things like that. You can you don't need to necessarily buy things for the house or if the house plumbing gets destroyed you don't have to pay for that um, but the benefits of home ownership is that you get a lot of tax advantages you get a lot of tax returns and then generally you build up equity because the home's value generally increases and so that means that eventually you can sell the home for more than what you bought it for versus a car where a car's value only goes down a home's value generally goes up so if you sell off your house before you pay off the loan, you can take the money that you made on top to pay off your loan. 
So that's a big thing that's good for uh, buying. If you're ever able to get a large chunk of money, maybe from a, um, a you know inheritance or something like that, it's a good idea to throw it towards a home or a condo or something like that. So that's it. That's uh, mainly what we'll be asking you is is how to figure out um, this example here: the down payment points, monthly payment, total interest, and then we'll ask you to fill out an amortization schedule for a couple months, which is through these computations. Good luck. We'll see you next time.